Creating an API in Python can be a straightforward process thanks to a few of the libraries and frameworks that are available to us. In this video, we'll explore three ways we can build a REST API in Python. So I'll be going over Flask, FastAPI, and Django to create a REST API in Python. And there are some prerequisites for you to get started on this. So you need Python 3.9 or any of the higher versions. You also need a code editor. I recommend Visual Studio Code, also known as VS Code, and something to test our API calls with. So tools like Postman or the Postman VS Code extension. Let's start with Flask. So I have my VS Code open here in a directory called 3-Python-APIs. I'm gonna open my terminal here. And now what I'll do is create a directory for our Flask example. So I'll create a directory called Flask API. And now we can change our directory to Flask. So as you can see on the right-hand side, I have a directory called the Flask-API. So now I'll create a virtual environment where we'll install some packages that we need, one of them being Flask. So in order to create a virtual environment, the command is Python, space dash m vnv and whatever the directory you want the virtual environment files to be in in my case i'll go with dot vnv so now we have our virtual environment created we need to activate the virtual environment and you can do that by running the activate script inside the virtual environment subdirectory scripts so as you can see we have the virtual environment ready now i can do pip install flask this will install Flask package using the pick, which is the Python package manager. Now we'll create a file called main.py. There we go. And this will be in our Flask API folder. So this is where our code will go. So first of all, we'll do the import for Flask on top. So I'm importing Flask and JSONify, and I'll show you where we'll be using JSONify. And now we'll initiate the Flask API. We'll define a route. And there are some best practices that you can follow within the REST framework, which suggests that your API should be at a slash API route, and then whatever the function does or your specific endpoint does. So in our case, we'll create a greeting on our API route. So Let's go with slash API slash greet as the endpoint here. And we'll allow the users to only use the get method here. So APIs have a few HTTP methods that you can use. In our case, we'll go with get. And now I'll define the function greet itself, which will be just returning a message, ahoy world. Here we go. So this is where JSONify is being used. We are returning this message as JSON. And you'll see that once we test our API in Postman. And we have some boilerplate code again. We'll run the app. And I'll set the debug to true just to log any messages that might be helpful if our app runs into any issues. And that's the Flask example. So let's try it out by typing in Python main.py so we have the flask server that is running on port 5000 so if i open postman which i have installed again you can install postman or you can install their vs code extension or any of the other api testing tools so in postman i'll paste the url which was localhost port 5000 and our endpoint was slash api slash greet and we are doing a get request right to this API URL. So now if I click on send, you can see we get back a JSON response that says Ahoy world. And we are getting a status of 200 OK, which means our API is working as expected. Awesome, so that was the Flask example. Now let's move on to Fast API. I'll hit Control C to stop my Flask server here. We'll close this file. We'll create another folder called Fast API example and then i'll go ahead and create a main.py file but we'll still need a virtual environment just like we did for our flask api so i'll cd into the right directory here which is fast 
API example and we'll deactivate the virtual environment that we have currently activated and create a new one. So Python dash M VNV and then I'm creating the virtual environment in .vnv directory. You could have installed FastAPI in the same virtual environment. It is just better to keep it separate for separate examples because that's how you would set up your own uh, personal project. So now that we have virtual environment set up, let's activate it running the activate script here. And now we can do pip install FastAPI and also UVCon. Okay, so after we are done installing both of those packages, now we can write some Python code. So from fast API, just like we did in Flask, we are gonna import fast API and we'll initiate the fast API. And the code looks pretty similar to what we had in Flask. So we define a route with where our API will exist. So again, following the best practices, let's go with API slash, again, we'll do a greet, right? And you can see that we define the method right here. So users can do a get request, right? Now we'll define the function itself, which is the greet function, and we'll return a JSON message, right? Which says, ahoy world. There we go. And now again, the boilerplate Python code of if name is equal to main, we want to run the server and that's where UVCon comes in. So UVCon allows you to run your fast API server. So I'm gonna import UVCon. We could have done that on the top here too. Since I didn't, that's why I'm doing it at the bottom now. And then UVCon.run, and we are running the app since app is what our fast API is. We specify the host, which is localhost, right? And you can also specify the port. So our Flask was running on 5000 by default. Let's go with 8000 for our fast API. Okay, after saving that, we can run this by typing python main.py. Okay, we hit an error and it cannot import fast API. So there's the capitalization error here. I don't know how that changed back to all lowercase. So I'll hit save again and run the command python main.py again. And you can see Ubicon has started our server and it's running on port 8000. So let's go to postman and you can clear the response here or you can create a new request. So I'll just clear the response, change the URL to 8000 and then also add the API slash greet endpoint, right? And if I click send, again, you can see it's a get request. You will get a JSON response saying, Ahoy world. So one good thing with fast API is you get documentation automatically for your API and you can access that on your local URL, whatever the port is slash docs. So let's go and try that. So I'll open a browser window here and go to my local host port 8000 slash docs. So you can see we have an endpoint called slash API slash greet, an explanation of what it does, which is basically greet. And then you can do a get request on this endpoint, right? So if I click on try it out, click execute, you can see that you can either do a curl request. It'll give you an example, right? This is the request URL and you will receive this response body. And this is the response headers. So get all of this documentation by default with fast API, which is an added benefit over Flask. Now let's go over the final one, which is Django REST framework, also known as DRF. So I'm going to hit control C to stop our UVCon server for the fast API example. And I'm also going to deactivate the virtual environment here. Also, we'll need a new folder for our Django example. There we go. I'm going to create a main.py as we did for every other project. And I'm gonna change my directory here to the Django directory. And I'm gonna go through the same process of creating a virtual environment. We'll activate the virtual environment and we'll do pip install Django and Django REST framework.
Also, this will be more complex than the other two examples, which was Flask and Fast API. Okay, our packages have been installed. Now we'll start a new Django project and call it Django API. The command to do that is Django admin start project space, whatever the name you want to give. In my case, it's Django API example, and we are using the root directory, which is Django dash example. Hit enter. Now let's run another command, which is python manage.py start app API. Okay, this will give us some code that we can work with for our API. As you can see on the right hand side here, it generated an API folder. Now it's time to write some code. So we will set up the model in models.py in the API directory. So under the comment where it says create your models here, I'll define a class and I will call this greeting because that's what our API will do is to greet. And we'll make this a character field with a max length of 255. Now we'll create a new file called serializer.py inside the API folder. So there it is. And add the following code. Now let's set up the API view in views.py. So I'll get rid of this. And this is where we'll define the get request and what the message needs to be for our greeting. So we are sending, this is where we'll define the get request, as you can see here, right? And also what the greeting message is, which is a whole world. We'll save that file. Now to set up the URL routing, We'll create a file named urls.py inside the API folder. And this is where we'll define where our API route will exist, which we have been following the practice of having it at an endpoint slash API slash greet. And this is the code for that. So I'm specifying the path here, slash API slash greet. We'll save that. Now we have to include our apps URL into the main project, right? You know, we were in the API folder here. So in order to do that, we go into the Django API example and in urls.py, this is where we'll need to include our apps URL. So if I scroll down, you can see here are the URL patterns. So I want to include my API URL. So I'll just add that here and include is not being imported. So we'll import that here and your error should go away. Now we have to update the Django settings. So we have to add REST framework and API to the installed apps list in the Django API example. So if I go to settings.py on my file explorer here on the right hand side within VS Code, and this is still under the Django API example and not the API directory, scroll down to installed apps. There we go. We have to include REST framework and the API. Hit save. Now, in order to run our API, we'll need to run migrations and then start the server. So in order to run the migrations, we'll do run the manage.py and the command migrate. Okay, we didn't see any errors. So now we can start the server, manage.py, and the command is run server. Okay, so our server is running on localhost 8000. So I'll copy that, go to Postman, clear my response here from the last request that we did. So it's on port 8000 and URL endpoint that I had was slash API slash greet. And now we can do a get request. So if we do send, we should see message saying ahoy world. Now, if you go to your browser and paste this same URL endpoint, you should get this Django REST framework doc, right? So we have get request that we are making to this endpoint. We are getting HTTP 200 OK. Get and options are the allowed HTTP methods and the content type is JSON, right? So there it is. I showed you three ways how you can create an API in Python using three different frameworks and libraries. So we used Flask, Fast API, and Django REST framework. I hope this was insightful and let me know in the comments if you do want more Python related tutorials. There will be a blog post that you can follow along if you want to try these libraries. But yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.